So a classic electrophilic aromatic substitution. We have phenol, and we're going to add chlorine in the pair position. Right? To add chlorine in the pair position, we need Cl2 and FeCl3. That makes that super electrophile, right? because, of course, a benzene ring isn't very reactive. But the oxygen has, of course, lone pairs, right? and that helps donate electrons in the ring. But what I want to go through now, right? you can know this, which is awesome. You should know that. But the question is, why? Why does it go para, and why is it stabilized? So we're going to look at the reactivity of the starting material. That's one part. And then we're going to look at the stabilization of the intermediates, which we call sigma complexes. By doing that, that's going to help us understand the why this happens that way. All right, so first, we're going to talk about the reactivity of the starting material. So to understand the reactivity of the starting material, I'm going to do some resonance structures of the starting material. That's going to help me understand where on the ring it's electron rich, which will help me understand why the chlorine ended up on the pair position. All right, so if I draw some resonance forms, which we're all really good at now, or will be, what you see, all right, you'll see that the ortho and para positions, when we do these resonance forms, have negative charges. And that tells us that they will be electron rich. That helps us understand the reactivity of the starting material, right? We know how to make all these super electrophiles. Do we understand why the benzene ring reacts the way it does, right? So these resonance forms tell us there's a negative, negative charge there, a negative charge there, a negative charge there, ortho, para, ortho. So that's where electrophiles will end up going, right? If you have an electron donating group, and they end up going ortho and para because of these resonance forms. Now, that doesn't work for hyperconjugation, but not as well. And then fluorine, chlorine, and bromine also have these resonance forms, but they're just not happy about it. So they're overall deactivators, right? They're, remember, they're the slowest of the fast guys. They're the, well, no, yeah. <laughs> they're bad, but there's worse, <laughs> right? So that's how we understand the reactivity here. So the next part, we're going to look at the stabilization of the intermediate with these sigma complexes. All right, so let's go through the mechanism when we get to, to get to those sigma complexes. So we understand the reactivity. So we know that the uh, chlorine ends up in the para position. So we've got to grab the pi bond right, to react with our super electrophile, which we've already generated. You know how to do that. And that gives us our first sigma complex, our first intermediate. Chlorine's there plus charge here. And we put these little intermediate boxes around. That's our first sigma complex. Every electrophilic aromatic substitution has at least three. We always have three. The really stable ones are gonna have four. More resonance structures, more stable. So let's start looking at the resonance structures for this one. These are resonance structures of the sigma complexes. So it's different than the reactivity. This is like looking at the stabilization of the intermediate. All right, so moving it over a little bit. So you always see the three in the ring, right? You should always see the three resonance structures within the benzene ring, right? No problem. So there's three sigma complexes. These are sigma complexes, and we're doing resonance structures of our sigma complexes. Sigma complexes, reson resonance forms. Is there another one I've left out that I'm missing? Well, yeah, right? That's why this reaction works. It's actually this guy. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this one. Now, how did I know it was that one? I knew that because there's a plus charge and there's lone pairs. So I'm going to redraw this one, right? Because it's too hard. Don't draw two sets of arrows on one resonance structure, just like you wouldn't, right? Don't do that. Don't do that. Just redraw it. I'm going to redraw it. So it's, I'm not getting a fifth one here. I'm just redrawing one of them. And what you'll find, I hope, is that when you do this resonance form, what happened? The rule to end all rules. The one that we live by. This resonance form, not only is it the fourth resonance structure, it's the best one. Because this one has all, everybody has a full octet. All atoms have full octets. So if we label these, we can label that one A. There's B res sigma complex, C. This is still B. And now this is D, right? So we have four different sigma complexes. And one of our sigma complexes has a full octet. That means that this is, a, this is a really stable intermediate. That means it's likely that this reaction is going to take place. Right? Remember I told you for reactions to take place, you need one of two things to happen. Reactive starting materials and or stable products or intermediates in this case. So what do you have here? You have a reactive starting material. Right? That's what the, the first resonance form was about right? that I've already erased. And then you have a stable intermediate because of these sigma complex resonance forms. So it's resonance in both cases. One's about the reactivity of star materials. One's about the stability of the intermediates. Great idea this came up. The real question is why is OH an activator? OH is an activator because it donates electrons to the ring, makes it more reactive. The benzene ring is the nucleophile in an electrophilic aromatic substitution. And the OH is an activator because it is able to stabilize the intermediates. Right? Reactive star material, stable intermediates or products. That's why OH is an activator. That's why you get things in the para or ortho position. Yes, another point. It doesn't need to be, it doesn't matter what this, in this case, it doesn't matter what the super electrophile was. All we're really thinking about is why is OH an activator? So any super electrophile, any E, any E plus could be ortho or para. And that doesn't change anything about how we understand why it reacts.